Okay, so we're gonna start the presentation now. I'm sorry. Um, let me just share my screen. intention to finish the fight and that's what i always wanted to be for by here our next snap see that look at that using the hips and the punching can you move great great combination so these are the different styles of boxes like i said that are in ai in the uh in the game that the ai is all right good morning guys you guys see my screen it didn't really feel like facing uh, a swarmer of uh, a slugger or an outside box so um, now they're can everyone mute themselves because i can't fight based on angelo's phone i think it is coming from angelo yeah angelo's phone Okay. Okay. All right. Everyone muted? Yeah. Okay, guys. So um again, Carlos is gonna take over and he's gonna just discuss um what he does for cold calling, some notes, some tips, and um yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to um, message on the board. I will be looking at the notes to see any questions that you guys have that he can answer throughout the training. Perfect, guys. Right before we get started, just have one quick question. If you guys if you guys want to comment, if you want to omit yourself and kind of just answer that question, how many of you here, I see there's 34 of you, how many of you here are afraid of making anywhere from 10K to 30K a month? Everyone's afraid to. <laughs> I'm not afraid. So, right, that, that, that's how you guys should look at cold calling, right? Is every opportunity on the phone that you have, you have you literally have an opportunity to make ten to fifteen to thirty thousand dollars of a commission. So that's how you should look at cold calling, right? Not not being afraid of it. So let's dive right into it. So basically, um, why cold call? I call for sale by owners and expireds. You guys can do many different avenues. You can do FISBOs, expireds, you can do circle prospecting. There's many ways of obviously obtaining yourself business. For example, like some of you might do door knocking, might leave hangers. You guys might pay for leads or you're just waiting on a referral. I don't like to wait for business. I like to go and get my business, right? And the reason why I like that is because let's say, right, you have a certain neighborhood that you're attacking. It might take you two hours to hit 50 doors. And, and in just an hour, I might call over 100 people. Then then I might have, let's say out of those 100, I might have five solid conversations. And of those five solid conversations, two people, I can actually land an appointment. And boom, I have an opportunity of getting a listing. And in 30, 45 days, I have it in the contract, right? So here, here's just kind of like some scenarios, importance of cold calling in real estate, understanding what are expireds and what are FISBOs. Do you guys know what for sale by owners are and, ex and expires are? If you want to um, drop it in the chat, if you guys have any questions as I'm going through it. So some like ideas of what understanding what for sale by owners is, is someone who's on the market selling on their own. They're not paying any kind of commission, right? Maybe for a buyer's agent and you're going to deal with some objections, right? So when I call them, I, my first thing is, hey, John, hey, John, this is Carlos kind of giving you a call really quickly about your property here in Miami, Florida. I know that you've been overwhelmed a lot of calls. I'll keep it brief. If the right offer did come across the table and it made 100% financial sense to you, at this point, you're compensating an agent. Just to figure out if they're compensating an agent, right? Because we're obviously not going to do, do it with no commission being paid to us and figuring out their motivation. My very next question, I asked them, how quickly would you be able to move from the property? And they tell me, oh, it's gonna take, you know, six months and, you know, I don't have to go ahead and sell the property, then this is not someone that's motivated. You want someone who can close in the next 30 to 45 days. And then a person who's expired, right? Is someone who's already on the market with an agent, 
I kind of call them and figure out, figure out what's going on with the property, right? Is it still available? Are you guys going to, you know, put it on the back of the market with the same agent or are you open to a second opinion? If you guys want to like have questions of who to cold call or when to cold call, honestly, I wake up at 7 a.m. I'm on the phones by 745 calling expired and I call them all the way to like 830 and then I take a pause and then I get back on like around one or two best times that I've seen that people answer the phones are from two to four or from four to six. You're going to get a lot of traction. And if you guys don't have right now, like the um, opportunity to be able to make a financial investment to get a dialer, I recommend Vulcan 7 or Mojo Dialer. You guys can actually go on for sale by on Zillow and look up for sale by owners. And you can find any for sale by owner in wherever area you are, whether you're in Broward, whether you're in Miami, whether you're in Orlando, you can actually find someone and then look them up, right? It takes two seconds. Go on property search or go on RPR is free on the MLS and you can able to be able to find their name and then call them like, hello, Melanie, or hey, little John. You don't want to sound like, oh, is, is this a seller from Homestead or is this, you know, so-and-so? You don't want to sound like that. You want to sound like you know what you're talking about. Right. So reasons why. So reason why properties expire. Right. So two things, either the property's price wrong or there's just not enough marketing being put on the property. Right. So how do I determine that when I call uh, expired? I call them and I ask them, hey, is this property still available or, you know, that ended up selling by chance? And they tell me they're no longer interested in selling right away. I tell them, OK, would you consider yourself a seller if you got the full seven hundred thousand dollars you were looking for? And they're right there. They're going to tell me, no, it's no longer it's no longer for sale. I, I changed my mind. They didn't go on the market to just play games, guys, and just get calls from us that they're getting 50 to 100 calls daily. So I asked them right away, hey, what were your original plans when you did put it up for sale? And they're going to unravel everything. You guys have to also be ready to deal with people that they have so much going on. It could be someone that they're selling because someone passed away. Look, I had someone the other day that they actually started crying on the phone and she told me she didn't want to be on the phone. And I had to understand that, be empathetic. And I couldn't continue to my next question. I had to lay her off the phone. But now at this point... I already had a follow-up call with her. And then my next follow-up call is going to be to determine whether or not we can set up an appointment and see if we can get her back on the market. Wendy's asking, what are the best times to call? These so the best times to call, again, you want to be the very first one. So kind of what I do, Mojo and Vulcan 7, like any, any dialer, they take about 24 hours to post the actual listings. What I do, you guys can hop on the MLS. There's a section that shows expired. You can actually click on that. And daily, there's a list of expireds. I true people search them. And I look up their name and I find their number and then I call them, right? At what so, time? So I do 7.45 a.m. I start calling to like 8.30. And then, but the best time that I've gotten a lot of people answering has for sure been like from 2 to 6, from 2 to 6 p.m. For sure, like in, in, the, in the afternoon. So you guys also want to make sure that you're not just like, a lot of you right now are just looking for business, like how I was a year ago. If you guys can relate to me, what happened to me a year ago when I first got into this industry a year and a half ago, actually, was I didn't have a quick book of business. I didn't have, you know, referrals right away. I had to do build my clientele through cold calling, right? So that's the why that's the reason why I chose for sale by owners on Zillow. You guys want to be able to make sure who you're going to go ahead and try to get business with is someone who's ready to go in the next 30 to 45 days. You don't just want to go to every appointment or, you know, just give, give yourself availability to everyone. So when you do call this person, you want to determine one, if they're paying a commission, two, how motivated they are. And when you set up the appointment, let's say you're able to get the appointment 99% of the time when I first landed an appointment at first, it was like a preview, right? I'll get there. And I wasn't like directly like talking about whether or not it made sense for us to work together. It was basically a preview. Me show, like them showing them, me the home and me seeing if I had a buyer. You can kind of recap on the phone. Don't be afraid. Hey, John, hey, just to quickly recap our entire conversation. I'm going to your house, like I know the time and date that you have set to determine whether or not it makes sense for us to work together. Right. Not that I have a direct buyer for your property. And how do you buy? OK, so if you guys are familiar with um, property search, you guys can hop on property search and put in the address and it tells you their name. It'll tell you two people on title, three people on title. The more you know, the better. Right. So let's say someone like John is on title and, he, and then you have Jenny. Right. So, hey, John, you know, completely understand that, you know, you guys are for sale by owner. However, boom, 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 let's say you get to the point where he tells you, yeah, you know, I need to speak to my wife. You can always redirect that and know the wife's name and you'll be able to go from there. So one of the things that I focus on heavily, heavily, right, is I try to pump out, pump out as many calls as I can. So let's say I try to call 100 people a day, 500 calls a week is for sure going to land, land me some kind of business. So I call, I, and then also be ready, right? Have like a template or this is what I'm doing right now. 
You can actually go on the MLS, whoever you're calling, you can actually print it, print it out and write down, okay, my call I have with this person, 7, 745, let's say. Let's say they didn't answer, right? And you write it, you write it down that day, I'm going to call them back the next day, right? And you call them again, or you call them, let's say you call them at 745 a.m., you call them again around 2 p.m., around 3.30 p.m., and if they don't answer, set like a, a follow-up, okay? If you think that's a good one, you can recall it. If you had a good conversation, always go for an appointment. But if you can't get an appointment, land a follow-up call. Once you land that follow-up call, right from there you're going to go ahead and try to land the appointment to be able to go to the appointment and when you guys go to the appointment you don't just want to go with regular stuff like oh we're going to bring bring you comparables and i'm going to offer you, you know. hey what's up uh, i'm sorry can you mute yourself <laughs> so you, you guys will just want to go to like the appointment and just say okay i'm going to you know get you the photography they already know what you guys are going to do you want to stand out one of the things that i do when i take stuff to the listing presentation I call the other properties that are in the market, what commission they're paying, who's selling it, how long it's been on the market. And these are things that I bring to the seller and it, it will help you stand out. Another thing, when you guys are calling on the phone, you want to be able to stand out from everybody else. I've been told myself, and I know for a fact that of 100 people that are calling, that only seven probably sound like me. There's no way that everybody's asking the same questions that I'm asking, right? For example, in expired, I open up a conversation. Hello, John. Hey, John, this is Carlos giving you a call from the property you have for sale here in Miami, Florida. I just had two questions regarding the home if you have 30 seconds. And they're going to tell me whether they have 30 seconds or not. If they do, okay, great. That was my first question. My second question is, is that property still available? That ended up selling by chance. And then right there, they're going to unravel everything. You don't want to sound, you don't want to immediately give away, oh, this is Carlos with a Lifestyle International Realty. How are you doing today? They don't care how you're doing and you don't care how they're doing. Let's be honest, right? We're here, we're here for a goal. The goal is to get them the result that they're looking for and their goals to sell. Can't, I can't move this nice. So when you guys are also calling on the phone, you want to make sure you educate these people, right? A lot of them are going to say, Hey, I, I, I want to do this on my own. I'm only paying a two and a half percent commission for a buyer. Hey, completely understand Mr. Seller that you're paying, you know, two, two and a half percent commission for a buyer. But let me ask you a question, right? If the right offer did come across the table and it made financial sense, but it had a, a, a higher attached commission to it with another agent involved at that point, would it really matter if another agent was involved or another commission was attached to it as long as you had the numbers that made sense to you? Obviously that line can only take you so far. Why? Because there could be a seller that's listed at 650, but his property is actually worth 500,000. So if you do land the appointment, that's up to you as an agent, when you get to that appointment to educate them. Okay. Hey, Mr. Seller, you're overpriced. This is why the property hasn't moved, right? And you walk them through all that. You can literally, I've done it with my partner, Himana. We've gone to an appointment with a lady that was overpriced by $100,000. And we were able to secure a listing appointment with her and walk her through as to why she was overpriced. We ended up not getting the listing. They ended up listing with someone else for 1.5%, completely okay. Just me personally, I wouldn't take a listing if someone's offered me 1.5%, less than 2%. I'm just not doing it because... You know, we're, we're paying marketing and I also need to pay the, the other agent, which is bringing a buyer, which is super important. So I, I, me personally, I'm just not doing it. And then another thing that I use big time, I recommend you guys take notes on this one, right? right. On average, it takes 30 days for an average agent to sell a property. Let's say someone says, oh, I don't have, I don't need a listing agent. I, I, I don't, I don't need representation. I can just sell this property on my own. I've sold properties before. Hey, Mr. Seller, thank you so much for sharing that information with me. It sounds like you're a very sophisticated seller, but let me ask you this. It takes on average, according to statistics, a regular average agent 30 days to sell a property. So that would mean that it would take you three times longer to sell a home, right? So are you willing to, you know, procure the cost of the, 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 the holding cost for the next three months, 120 days, 90 days of sitting on the market and absolutely not having no type of traction? Put those things in their head. And when you're asking them questions, like let's say you already know what's your next plans. Hey, Mr. Seller, don't you agree with me that you would, you know, get into your next goal which is let's say moving to orlando and you know starting your life and getting your property sold wouldn't you agree with me that you getting the number that made financial sense to you already wouldn't that be something that you know will be good for you to have already or being in the works for it? and they're going to literally unravel all of these things for you we have a question here um what do you have an, a dedicated crm to follow up with the leads that you're cold calling we use follow up bus and hubspot yeah so I, right now i don't have a crm which i am looking into getting follow up follow boss what i do use is what I said earlier on MLS, it kind of shows you the expiry that you're calling, right? So it shows you the address, the MLS number, the price point. I print that out and I write a date. Okay, for example, let's say it's July 15th. I put the date on it. Okay, this is the time that I called this person. This is the conversation. I'll take key points of our conversation that we had. 
if the person was saying that they're not ready just yet, or let's say that they need to talk to their agent because they just expired and they kind of want to see where they're at, you got to understand too, right? They were listed with somebody. So I always use the line of like, hey, I don't step on anybody's toes, but at this point, are you going to relist with the same person or you open the second opinion? So no, I do not use the CRM as of right now. I just print everything out and I look at my follow-up shit. I usually do follow-ups from like 11 to like one and that time frame is when I call those people back. A lot of people do use Google Sheets. I found Google Sheets to be more um, organized for me, um, but I hear follow-up boss is also very good CRM that everyone uses. How do I stand out when cold calling as a brand new agent that hasn't processed a sell? So great question. I, I was actually there a year and a half ago. It's very difficult to try to stand out where you don't have numbers backing you up. But guys, use lifestyle to your advantage. You're part of a huge, huge brokerage. There's like 25 plus offices. One of the things that I would say, this is a quick line that I kind of used recently. So, hey, Mr. Seller, um, just to kind of, you know, you don't know me and I don't know you, just to kind of reintroduce myself. My name is Carlos. I've been with Lifestyle for two and a half years. The company has been around over 10 years. Since 2015, we have over 25 offices worldwide, internationally. And, you know, I tell them about the, the sales volume, right? I can't remember well, how much was the number last month that the, the Lifestyle had in sales. Uh, seven point something, seven point eight million. Was it 17? last month so you know tell tell them about that right and and you use the people behind you whether you have a you know a branch manager at a certain office whether you have someone who you directly work with um so to kind of put more answer on that question that you asked pedro um i recommend you guys find someone who is who you were you were you were they where you want to be where they are right let's say this person's like the cold caller you want to be or they're the listing agent the buyer's agent you want to go ahead and learn from that person i would say DM them if you have them on Instagram. If you don't know them in person, DM them. If you do know them, go up to them and be like, hey, what can we do so we can work together? You know, I, I love the way you do things. I want to grow and I want to learn. And that's going to happen with a lot of people that are very uncomfortable with like doing this. But I have still do it and I've been doing it since I started. Go 50-50 on deals. When I joined Jimena's team and I started working with her, to this day, I still do 50-50 deals work. Why? Because I'm constantly learning daily. But everything comes at a cost. I paid for coaching. A year and a half ago to get good at cold calling, but there's a whole second part to it, right? That second part is getting getting to the appointment, closing the deal at the appointment. You need to, you need to know your stuff. So I've been able to learn from her a lot. She's really good at closing appointments in person. So I highly, highly recommend anyone, if you don't have a coach, find someone who can coach you. To You can get good all you want on the phone, but if you're not good in person to lock in the deal, this it's not going to happen. You get me? And, and by getting... I'm sorry. No, you're good. So getting getting coach, getting someone to coach you on cold calling and find someone who you can close deals with. Find someone who's already calling for sale owners. Find someone who's already calling expires. Find someone who's already landed appointments, who already has listings and go from there. Um, And how do you know the home is overpriced, neighborhood comps? So I don't run comps right before I call. I kind of just try to pump out as many calls as I can. One of the things that I do do, like once I do call the, um, the property, I run my homework, right? I do comps. I'll call a seller back and I say, hey, Mr. Seller. So, so far, I think we've had a good conversation. I'm going to reach back out to you in about 24 hours with a price analysis, right? So let's say you call them back you tell them and you call them back in the next 15, 20 minutes or an hour. So you under promise and over deliver. And you call them, you tell them, hey, look, this is what, according to my you know, analysis, what the property could possibly sell for. Let's set up a meeting. 10 to 15 minutes is all I need to kind of walk you through my plan of action on how we can get property sold in today's market. I try not to discuss commissions, what I'm going to list the price at on the phone. Let's say they tell me, right? And I get it all the time. Hey, Carlos, what's what's your commission structure? So, hey, Mr. Seller, great question. That's one of the things that we're going to cover at the appointment, and we're going to go into heavy depth about it. But let me ask you a question, right? They, they keep asking me questions for me to unravel like my plan on the phone. Hey, Mr. Seller, let me ask you a question. If I were to walk you through my entire plan and everything didn't make sense, and my commission made 100% sense to you, and you wanted to go ahead and Big me, would you be able to make a decision right over the phone, such as biggest selling your home, right? They're going to tell you no, because you need, you need to see them in person. You also need to see the property, right? Sit down and go through, go over the listing agreement. Another thing, speaking of the listing agreement now that I just spoke about it, one of the things that I don't do and a lot of, I know a lot of agents do, I do not charge my sellers a cancellation fee. So I'm calling them and I'm asking them for their business. Once I get there, that's one of the like key points that I do. I tell them, look, I'm not going to charge your cancellation fee. I'm the one asking you for your business. And for whatever reason, yeah, I'm not like doing what I said I was going to do. You're, you're, you're more than welcome to fire me at any point. But 100%, I know that that's not going to happen because I know what I bring to the table. Let's move to the next slide. Mm -hmm. 
research. So er earlier, right, I had said about it's very huge to do your research before cold calling. You definitely want to know the person's name. You kind of want to know like about the area, right? If you're calling Kendall, if you're calling Color Bay, they might ask you a question and I'll have a direct answer for it. If you guys want to like learn more on what to say on the phone, it's, it's all comes down to preparation, right? So more likely you guys might be thinking, right now, oh, how, how do I go ahead and start? Carlos, if I, if I want to start cold calling. But when you do find that person that, you know, you like, that they're, they're at where you want to be, try to see if they have scripts, right? And the script is just simply a guide. I no longer use scripts. I did. I'm no longer a fan of them. I just used it as a guide and I embodied it onto my own and created my own words with it. And then now I already know if the client's going to tell me, you know, let's just put an example. Red, I already have an answer for red. If it's blue, if it's green, if it's yellow, I already have an answer for that. So the only way you're going to succeed is by being prepared when you're going to get on these calls. Once you're prepared and you sound 100 and you sound 100 confident, you're ready to go. And I would say if you guys want to learn, start role playing, find a friend, or role play in your head. Which, by the way, we are going to do a little role play after he goes through his training. <laughs> so yeah, like role role play in your head, read the script, embody the script. You're not going to be like, for example, right? This is this used to be me. I used to have the script literally in front of me and I'll wait for like the objection and I'll be like, oh, wow, you know, I'm for sure. Like, I'm, I'm hacking right now, you know, and waiting for the objection. I'm, oh, I'm going to handle it right here. The objection handle is right here. You're going to be like on the phone trying to listen. You're going to be scrolling to the next page. You're not going to be able to find that in time. It's not going to happen. So you definitely want to put in some time. And you also did no notice that you did sound like a robot, right? Yes. In the beginning. Yes. There was times that I was sounding very robotic. People were telling me I wasn't obviously you know, noticing that. Right. I was, I was thinking I was like killing it. I obviously wasn't. Once I eliminated the script is when I really started to see success. Um, I went to multiple, multiple trainings, got, got coached a lot, learned a lot about, you know, what sales is, how to understand the human behavior, the psychological game about it, the questions. You, you want to try to get a lot of yeses, right? So, for example, let's say the seller's telling me, oh, you know, so far I don't need an agent, et cetera, et cetera. I, I just want to sell the property on my own. Bring me a buyer if you have one. Hey, Mr. Seller, so can you agree with me that the best case scenario here is that you get the financial result that you're looking for? They're going to say yes, right? And then I can tell them, like, let's say they tell me that their next plans, hey, Mr. Seller, how come you're selling the property? Like, knowing how the market is right now, you got the property back in 2020, was another thing you can pick up from Property Search. Property Search will actually tell you when they bought it, how much they bought it for, how long they've owned it. Hey, so Mr. Seller, I see you've owned the property for the past four years. You know, if you don't mind sharing with me, how come you're selling the property? I'm just trying to, you know, get a better understanding to see if my buyers make sense for your home, right? Because all of you have buyers. There's, you know, look how many agents you're surrounded by here at Lifestyle. We all have buyers, right? But it's about getting a deal that makes sense to go ahead and move forward to bring them the financial result that they're looking for. So addre addressing concerns, right? Let's say this person might tell you, hey, you know what, Carlos? Everything sounds great, but bro, I just had a bad experience with my agent. I'm not planning on relisting with anybody. Hey, completely understand, John, that you had a bad experience. But we all go through bad experiences, right? You might go to a restaurant. You might even have a relationship that you had a bad experience. Doesn't mean you stop dating. Doesn't mean you stop going out to eat, right? You don't just give up. But you have to make them feel 100% certain on the phone that you're completely different from the rest. Remember, there's 50 other people calling, which is why, like, I know for a fact I'm different, but there has to be others that are saying the same things as me, and we all sound similar. Like, it's pretty funny because every time I call somebody, they'll tell me, I just got a call 15 minutes ago from um, so-and-so, you know, you guys keep calling me. It's like, and I always say this, hey, you know what, Mr. Seller? Yeah, there's 100% a lot of agents calling you. They're just trying to get your listing. I'm call I'm cold calling you because I'm so ambitious and my business is growing and I'm giving you a call because I've been able to help others in your same predicament move the property. For example, right? There's someone right now who actually have a listing um, duplex. If you guys have an investor client, we can collab. It's a duplex in Fort Lauderdale for 539. He had it on the market for over 90 days, listed at $100,000 over, guys. Okay, listen to that. A hundred grand over. He had a cash offer for 545, didn't take it because his agent was telling him that his property was worth 500K. I mean, I'm sorry, 100K over than what it was worth. I was able to sit down with him on Zoom. We went through everything. Everything made sense. And I educated him and now I have a listing. And you see, he had a listing for 650. I brought him down to reality. This is the reality. Everything made sense to him. So as long as you know what you're talking about, they're going to work with you. The phone is just simply an avenue to get you the appointment. Once you get to the appointment, it's a whole different ballgame. Right? And then the consistency of uh, the question that Pedro had asked earlier of having systems in place. At first, I was very, very, very bad at following up, right? I'll have a great call. And then I waited two weeks so that I didn't want, oh, my God, I'm scared to call the seller back. You know, they're, they're probably bombarded with a lot of calls. I, I don't want to be annoying. Listed. What I've noticed, 99% of the time, they always end up listing. So, 
you guys got to look at every call. It's, it's the same. Sales is always the same. It's always the, the same objections. I don't want to pay a commission. I'm selling by owner. Um, I just came off the market. I'm frustrated. Um, you're not the you're not the first agent calling me. It, it's all the same. So once you guys already understand where you're gonna say on the phone and the objection handlers, you have them ready. How are you gonna lose? So be huge on follow up. Why? Because you may not land the appointment right away, but just because you follow up three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, other agents may not be calling that many times. Right? They're probably only gonna call one time. Oh, he told me no, and then they're gonna get scared. And then I said that's another thing you guys need to be ready for. This all this all this all this sounds great. I get hung up on daily. I literally say hello, hello. This is Carlos. I'm calling. Clicked. There's, there was a guy that told me he, he literally told me on the phone that he wanted to know where I was at to come and and beat me up because I <laughs> because I gave him a call. Like I actually have the recorder here. I'm not gonna play because he he cares. But <laughs> then you're gonna get hung up on. You're gonna have people that are be, gonna be emotionally like not not emotionally stable. These are people that are being called by fifty people daily. These are people that are being like asked questions like crazy and they're going through something. They're either someone died in the family or you know, maybe they're going through financial issues as to why they're selling before even even getting to a position where they're not able to pay their mortgage, et cetera. Um, so you guys need to be ready for that, right? And you also need to be ready for stuff like this. I have gone weeks for sure, or like days, like look, the, these past two days, I've called for like three hours, nothing. Maybe four or five conversations, nothing concrete. You guys need to be ready for that. Nothing great, right, comes to you overnight. Everything does take time. It took me, it took me a good six months before I even like got good on the phones. And that was with the right guidance. Again, I go back to importance, who you learn from. At first I was just cold calling, winging it. I could have landed a lot more appointments if I would have been coached. Once I got coached two to three months, I was ready, ready, land, landing 10, 15 appointments. And I went to a lot of those appointments and a lot, a lot of them were very previews. But once I got selective of who I'm going to work with, remember you guys do not need 10 listings a month. You need two listings that can pay you what? 10, 15 grand, that's 30 grand, two listings. You're good. We keep having internet issues. Sorry. Okay, so where where I left off, right? So hey, Mr. Seller, um, you know that was a great question. I haven't. I just glanced through your property. I haven't really done my full homework on it. I'm gonna give you a call back in 24 to 48 hours to give you a price analysis on on more details of what the home is worth. In the meantime, let me go ahead and send you over some credentials, in which I know you will be impressed. You probably this want you probably want you probably I want you probably. Can you guys hear us? Hello. Yes, we hear you guys now. Oh, okay, perfect. Sorry, we we jumped on another screen because we keep losing connection on the other screen. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um. So yeah, I I always try to use that word, but that sounds fair enough, right? Like let's say say, hey, I need to go ahead and uh, speak to my wife. I need to speak to my husband. Hey, you're the one. You probably got a list. <laughs> Can you guys please mute yourselves? I'm sorry. All right, go. Yeah. All right, so so kind of where, where I was at, right? Let's say they tell me, hey, uh, Carlos, I need to go ahead and speak to my husband. I need to speak to my wife. Hey, sir, completely understand you need, you need to go ahead and speak to them. Let's go ahead and set a tentative appointment uh, for 30. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and send you over some credentials in which I, I know you will be impressed. If for whatever reason, you know, it doesn't make sense for you guys, you guys can go ahead and cancel. But let's set something tentative for now. My schedule is constantly filling up. You guys want to give yourself that value, right? And then once you set that tentative appointment, and then you, you can tell them, hey, Mr. Seller, let me ask you. If I did show you a plan and everything didn't make sense and my credentials do make sense to you guys, don't you think that's something that your wife or your husband would consider at this point? All right, hit him, hit him with something like that. I'm and not, then, I, 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 
um, I'm not getting a coach because I want to learn everything from me. You feel me? And I want to be genuine. And besides. Right. right. The, the whole point of a coach um, is, is just to simply have guidance. Right. Right. Because let's say you're going to go ahead and, and, call, and call someone. You may not know exactly what to say or how to say it or when to say it, right? Let's say like he was a certain objection. I mean, you might, you might, you might be able to, right? You might be able to like overcome everything, get yourself an appointment, and start it from there. Completely, I'm with you. But you could literally embody anything you want to your liking. For example, someone that I follow, it's Anthony Nucci on Instagram. I think he's great from Expires. I use what he says. Um, for calling Fizbos, I listened a lot and I learned a lot from Alexis Valladares. So that's one of the persons that I, I started learning cold calling from. And then I listen to a lot of Jordan Belfort, right? Jordan Belfort set like he's in a whole different ballgame. He's not in real estate, but that's someone who I also listen to. Wendy but, has a point. She says you can't learn from you if you don't have the experience. So yeah, th these these are people that I've learned from, and I kind of like you know em embody my, my own my own words. I turn into my own words, right? They have a specific line that they use. I'll, I'll switch it up. Like for example, even Daniel G, right? Daniel G is not in real estate. He sells products, but his his lines were really good, right? Like for example, let's say this, right? Hey, hey uh, Carlos, you know what? I, I don't need an agent, you know? Hey, Mr. Seller, completely understand. Uh, I assume so right before the call that you weren't going to be interested. But let me ask you a question. If you were to be open into working with an agent, what would be the two things that you would need to see in order to be open to working with somebody? They're going to unravel it to you. I had a guy that told me, I need someone who's going to be here all the time. And I need someone who's 100% serious about selling my house. Boom. All I needed to know with a simple question about asking guys. How, how, far, how deep are we? Are we ready for a Q&A? Um, yeah, th tell them about the resources that they can use at no cost other than hiring a coach. What do you um, use? So not no cost, YouTube, right? YouTube people. Um, I know I've heard a lot of the, this guy, Ricky Carruth. I don't really like his style of like, oh, is there anything I can possibly help you with? I'm, I'm more of an aggressive type of, you know, sales guy. So I look at Jordan Belfort. Um, look up Nucci's really good on Instagram. Viadad is very, very, very good as well. Um, I have a couple cold calling videos on my Instagram. I'm going to start dropping more. I can do live videos. If, for some of you who are interested in learning more, um, DM me. I'm going to drop my Instagram in this chat or my phone number. Get with me personally. And then we can do, you know, weekly Zoom calls. I, I'm, I'm on Zoom every day. Calling expired. We can hop on Zoom and you can kind of, kind of, you guys can see how I handle objections. I am coming up with some scripts that are, that are for me, like that I use for myself. Um, and I can share that with you guys if that, if that can help. And what resources resources do you use to like get for sale by owners? Like when you wake up and you're ready to call these for sale by owners, expire listings, like where do you go? So for so, job in the chat for sale by owners is going to be Zillow.com. There's a section um, on Zillow. You can actually click buyers and it says by owner. And then you can click, you can put the area you want. Let's say you're down in Broward. You can put Miramar, um, you know, Lauder Hill, anything you want, and it's gonna it's gonna show you, it's gonna give you seven days, one day, fourteen days, twenty one days of what's active in the market. I usually like to call the fresh ones. You could definitely call the old ones, but I like to call the fresh ones. And then you can actually personalize it where it gives you alerts as soon as a property hits the market for sale by owner. And go on property search. Can you put that in the chat as well? Um, you can go on property search and look up with the address, find their name, and call them by knowing their name. Don't don't be one of those that you, that you call them and you, you don't know their name. So you have Zillow.com. Another way you guys can do it, you can drive for dollars, right? So you don't need to just call these people that are being bombarded with calls. If you guys don't want to like use Zillow or Zillow, like it doesn't have enough for sale by owners for you because it doesn't, doesn't have that many right now because I, I call them. You can actually drive a specific area. Let's say, you know, an area where there might be sellers or just pick an area. There might be a for sale sign outside and they're not listed on Zillow. Do your due diligence. Go on, on um, property search. Look up the address, find their name, and then give them a call, right? The next extreme step you can take is dress up very nice, you know, get everything ready, whatever it is you take to a listing presentation. I would definitely take a seller's net sheet, some comps, right? I do everything off of my computer. I don't like to print out comps. I like people to see why a property sold for a certain amount versus another home, right? So, you know, and call these agents, agents that are listed in the area, right? I go by um, the actual uh, air area. So let's say it's like Mango Hill. You can actually go by the actual area where the actual sales and look up that that out and look, hey, Mr. Seller, this property is one that sold for this amount, closest square feet, closest bathroom. And I spoke to this agent, Jenny. I actually know this agent, right? Let's say you, you don't even know the agent, right? But you might. Hey, I actually know this agent. We had a great conversation. They asked that agent, hey, if you don't mind sharing with me, I do have a listing coming up very soon. 
what did the appraisal come back at once you see the dependent? And they're going to share this information with you guys. This is all more powerful tools you can use to bring to the table. One of the quick tips I want to leave you guys with, um, you have exactly four seconds to catch a prospect's attention. If not, you're going to get clicked on 100%, right? So in those four seconds, the three things you want to focus on is being perceived sharp, having enthusiasm, and you're an expert in your field. You want to, you want to watch your tonality. That's one of the things that I was missing at first when I first started calling was fluff and tonality. That's one thing that I'm telling you right now. You're not going to be able to learn on your own. You have to learn from others. Your, your, your energy has to be high. You're, you can't just call someone. It's not like a, a McDonald's drive-thru employee. Um, yes, Jenny, I'm giving you a call with the property. You can't sound like that. Your tonality.